Uh, so now going on to verse 27. And Jesus said to them, again, this is as they're walking, they're on the way to the Garden of Gethsemane. And Jesus said to them, You will all fall away, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Now what a, what a disturbing topic for Jesus to bring up with his disciples, right? Do you have the scene? They, they've broken up from their beautiful mirror, this outpouring of love and grace and beauty from Jesus. But now Jesus, as they're walking on their way to the Garden of Gethsemane, He looks at His disciples once more and He says, Listen, you guys are all going to fail me. You're all going to forsake me. Every one of you. You're going to abandon me in my most needful moment. But please understand, Jesus did not say this to His disciples in order to condemn them. I don't think there's a note of condemnation here at all. Well, you stupid disciples, you'll let me down once again. No, no, that's not the idea one bit. The idea instead is that Jesus wanted them to know that he was fully in command of the situation. Men, your forsaking me will come as no surprise to me. I know. It, it's ordained of God. It, it's prophesied for us in Zechariah chapter 13, verse 7. It is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. God was working out everything according to his prophetic plan and, and the scriptures regarding the suffering of the Messiah. They must be fulfilled and they would be fulfilled. But notice this. There's a great note of hope in verse 28 where Jesus says what? But after I am raised up, I know you will fail me, you will forsake me, but God will raise me up, certainly, and we will all meet together. You may forsake me now, but we will meet together after I am raised up. Peter said to him, even though they all fall away, I will not. And listen, you don't have to be too creative in your mind to figure how Peter said this, right? There they are walking along again from the upper room over to the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus drops this bombshell in their midst, right? You're all going to forsake me. You're all going to leave me and, and, and leave me all alone. And, and then Peter says, no, wait, stop. And they all stop walking. And Peter turns and looks at Jesus in the face. And he motions over to all the other eleven in Peter's mind, right? All the 11 losers over there. And he says, well, they, look at it right there, verse 29, even though they all fall away, I will not. Now verse 30, and Jesus said to him, truly I tell you, this very night before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said, and this is Peter emphatically, if I must die with you, I will not deny you. And they all said the same. Peter only looked to how he felt at the moment. I'm going to ask you a question, just for your own reflection on the text right here. In verse 29, where Peter makes that very bold statement, does anybody in this room think that Peter was lying? That Peter in his mind, he knew, he know, no, no, he knew, he he thought, <laughs> I am really going to deny Jesus, but I'll lie to everybody about it right now. Does anybody think that for a moment? No. Peter believed what he said with all of his heart, right? And I believe that if the challenge came right at that moment when Peter said it, Peter probably would have stood up to the challenge. But here's the problem. At that moment, he felt pretty brave. When you walk on feelings, everything can change pretty quickly. In just a matter of hours, Peter will stand before a humble little servant girl, and he'll completely lose his courage. Peter meant it, but he meant it just for the moment. So he compares himself to the other disciples, and he makes himself feel very superior, but he's going to be soon humbled, and he would need a very special restoration because Jesus looked Peter square in the eye. He said, Peter, truly I tell you this very night before the rooster crows twice, you'll deny me three times. Through this very solemn warning, Jesus gave Peter an opportunity to take heed and to consider his own weakness. Did you understand what Jesus was telling Peter right there? Peter, you're not as strong as you think you are. Preachers love to poke a lot of holes in Peter, don't they? But how many times has Jesus said to me, David, 
You're not as strong as you think you are. And I have ignored it just as Peter did. I mean, really. I constantly overestimate my own strength in God. Because Peter responded to those words of Jesus, and he said, it says there emphatically, <laughs> if I must die with you, I will not deny you. And, and, and Jesus already knew Peter better than Peter knew Peter. And, and in overestimating himself, Peter was really ready to make this fall. And so all the rest of the disciples fell in the same way. It says there at the end of verse 31, and they all said the same. Every one of them. I'm amazed at the grace, at the goodness of Jesus here. You know, I'm amazed that Jesus just didn't say something like, well, you're wrong, I'm right, For, forget the whole lot of you, I'm going to go off and do my own thing. I'll go to Gethsemane alone. But no, he, he treats them very tenderly here. 